one of my viewers just left a comment recently that her son hates my voice when she watches my videos. <laughs> Dude, I don't blame you, man. I don't like hearing my voice either. Sometimes, I don't know if what, what part of my voice you don't like, but the one thing I don't like is I don't want to sound like a know-it-all. I really don't. And sometimes I'm like, man, do I sound like I'm a know-it-all? I hope not, because I really am not a know-it-all. I get passionate sometimes, though. Uh, let's see. I want to share with you Matthew chapter... 24 now i'm hoping i don't get any phone calls or anything when i'm driving otherwise the whole video is gonna get interrupted um but the reason i i put these earphones in because um i'm i'm navigating somewhere so i need to listen to my navigation but i want to be able to talk to you guys on the way there anyway so um let's hope everything goes great Matthew chapter 24. There's a lot in here. There's a lot in here. Before I read that, let me read to you something in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. 2 Corinthians 1, 4. Let's start with 3 first. Verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Holy Spirit's a comforter too, right? God, you know, God, comfort. Verse 4, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction. Do you know um, the word affliction, that's what I want to get at, is philipsis. T-H-L-I-P-S-I-S. -I -I it means persecution, tribulation. Now, when you are being afflicted, verse 6, he talks about being afflicted. It, it's, it's like the word philipsis. It's philibo, okay? They both tie in together. Philibo means to compress, persecute, press hard upon, or suffer tribulation. So we got philipsis. Tribulation. So if I go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 21, it says, For then there will be a great tribulation. Philipsis, right? So what is Philipsis? Let's just use the word suffering persecution. There will be a great suffering of persecution, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, no, and never will be. Be. If those days had not been cut short, no human would be saved. Very interesting. Talks about false Christs that perf or false prophets. Yeah, false Christ, false prophets. Verse twenty-four, perform great signs and wonders. They lead that so they can lead astray even the elect, possibly. Talks in verse eleven of Matthew twenty-four. There will be false prophets that arise. And lead many astray, man. Maybe I'll talk about it when I'm driving. Lawlessness will increase. The love of many will grow cold. But he, in verse 13, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. The one that endures to the end will be saved. Now, you know, I'll, I'm, I'm going to go on with that, talk a little bit about it, but it's interesting. Talks about in verse 15, when you see the abom abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Let the reader understand. Maybe the reader for times back then and times today. Whoever was reading these words back then, and then whoever's reading the words today. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountaintops. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down to take what is in his house. And let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. 
Um, interesting about house tops and stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that while I'm driving too. <laughs> okay. But I want to go back to, back to, well, verse 13, the one who endures the end will be saved. And then verse 14, very popular one with the Jehovah's Witnesses. I was a Jehovah's Witness for 30 years. This good news, the gospel, right? The good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony. They say as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. The end. So what end are we talking about? What end are we talking about? Jesus says those that endure to the end will be saved. The end of what? Remember, let the reader understand. He says in verse 15, this is Matthew writing under inspired by the Holy Spirit. Inspiration, inspire. In spirit, inspire means in spirit. Okay, so the word saved is sozo, right? So he that endures to the end will be saved, will be saved, will be saved, will be sozo, okay? Sozo. Sozo means to be saved. It means to be rescued from harm, preserved, um, delivered from harm. It also means to be healed. Now we can find the word sozo over in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been, or in Hebrew, I me. It means you are or you am. Am. Ego, I me. Jesus says, I am. Ego, I. I me is am. I am. So you am or are. You are saved. By grace you are saved. Through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. What is being saved? Grace is a gift. Being saved is a gift. I see even your faith is a gift from God, right? All of it. It says, verse 9, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. So that no one can brag about themselves. Not because of the things that you've done. Otherwise, you could brag because you could say, I've been saved because of uh, my goody goodiness, avoiding my baddie baddiness. But you also might say, I've been saved because I have endured to the end. Now, that word endured also in Greek means to persevere. Let's just, before I take off, let me read it. I just closed my Bible. Matthew 24, he that endures, endures hoop o meno, hoop o meno. It means remaining under the load, persevere. Remaining under that big load you got or persevering. Okay, so I'm going to drive and hopefully I be, can pay attention also to my directions. I've got navigation in my ears. First of all, I'd like to thank the Lord for letting it rain here in San Diego today because a um, couple reasons. It's keeping me cool inside my car. It's kind of a cool day, which is nice. We need some rain. We need some coolness here because my car is, uh, the air conditioning is broken down. Broke down last weekend, so keeps my phone cool too, which I use to make my videos. Otherwise my phone will overheat if it's a hot day till I get my air conditioning fixed. Another reason I'm thankful that it has rained a bit, and I hope it rains a little more because there's some bird poop right on my window. You can't see it thankfully, but I, I wash my car. I go through the drive through car wash all the time. And, um, and uh, uh, it, but where I park at home, the sprinklers, uh, the gardeners must have adjusted the sprinklers differently because I'm not kidding you, everybody that parks next to me, all of our cars get sprayed with this hard water. So we all get water spots all over our cars and it's terrible. So it looks like I didn't even wash my car. So I go wash my car. Then the next morning when I go out to get into my car, it's got water spots all over it. So if you guys think, 
hey, one, because I've had somebody actually made co a comment before, like, dude, you need to wash your car. Listen, I wash my car all the time, and it costs money. It costs money to wash the car. But the next morning, I got water spots. It, it's terrible. And if you're wondering how, well, why don't you save some money and wash your car at home? Well, um, so I live in a condo. And in a condo, you've got an association, right? Now, whether I live in a condo or in a house doesn't matter. Do you know in California, at least in Southern California anyway, it is illegal to wash your car in your driveway or at home. They, they have made that illegal. You can only legally wash your car in a car wash because they recycle the water and reuse it again because California, you know, is in a water shortage. So that's another good reason it rains. So, so um, like a few years ago, I wasn't aware that there had been a law that passed in California where you weren't allowed to wash your car. So I was living in a condo, right? Where there's an association, you pay association fees and all this. And this woman was walking by with her dog and she started screaming at me. Don't you know it's illegal to wash your car in San Diego? I'm gonna call the police. I'm like, whoa, whoa, I, I didn't know it was illegal. I didn't know, I was just spraying, I had just soaked the car down and I'm very, listen, I don't like to waste water. So I had just quickly sprinkled the car down and then I soaked it all up with a sponge and a bucket and then I, I rinsed it off and this lady went off on me. I'm not kidding, went, ah! <laughs> And so, but here's the thing you guys, I wasn't aware that it was illegal, but I still broke the law. Whether I was aware that there was a law or not, I still broke it. For instance, let's say that there's a piece of property and you wanna cross through this piece of property. Over to your right, there's a no trespassing sign, but you don't see it. The sign says no trespassing, but you don't see it. So you trespassed. Trespassing means <clears throat> to enter against the rules. Law says do not enter, but you entered. You crossed the line that you weren't supposed to cross. Do you understand me? Now, whether it was out of negligence or whether you were aware of it, hey, the law's the law. The sign doesn't say it's okay to trespass if, you're, if you weren't aware of it. The sign just says no trespassing. Right? So it's, it, if you get caught, it would depend on the mercy of the courtroom on you, whether you have to pay a fine, go to jail, whatever it is, right? You're hoping for mercy. You're hoping for some grace because you know you don't deserve it because you crossed the line. So it would be grace because you don't deserve it, right? Well, you know, that's where in Jesus' time, You've got these religious leaders back then. There's Pharisees, there's Sadducees, there's scribes, there's chief priests, there's, you know, there's these people that they can't stand Jesus. Jesus came full of grace and truth. The law was given by Moses. Yeah, but Jesus came full of grace and truth, which go hand in hand. You cannot separate grace from truth. He came full of grace, full of truth. Not half and half, 50% grace, 50% truth, 100% grace, 100% truth, just like the number 11. One number one is 100% the number one. This other number one is 100% number one. When you bring the 100%s together, they don't make 200%, they're joined together to make 100%. 11 looks like two numbers, yet it's one. That's what grace and truth is. They're one. And Jesus was full of grace and truth. But a lot of people would shout the law at him. You're, you're healing on Sabbath. You're breaking the law. You're doing work on Sabbath. You're breaking the law. Well, they didn't know that he is Sabbath. He is the rest that we enter into. It is him. Sabbath is not a day. It is a person. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Ugh. Anyway, so... So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, even Jesus says, My father continues to work until now. But didn't it say God rested on the seventh day? But his father continues to work till now, and so he works as well? What's up with that? They don't know that Sabbath is standing there in front of them. 
Very interesting. That's why you and I, we rest in Christ because we trust in him. But when you trust with him, you do what he says, right? It's called obedience. Hupakoe in Greek, to do what you hear from the Spirit. So, hupakoe, doing what you hear from who? The Spirit. Not from the world, but the Spirit. So, Jesus, he comes across these religious leaders quite often. And, you know, they brag about the law and how they're so obedient to it. So, you know what he says, you know, if, you're, um, if your hand does something that the Germans would call do a nicht nicht, a nicht nicht, a naughty naughty. If your eye looks at a woman with lust, ooh, that is a nicht nicht. You're doing a naughty naughty with your eye. How about your feet? Your feet cross that trespassing sign? You just did a nicht nicht. Whether you knew it or not, you nicht nicht. And then James talks about this tongue. This tongue that can set a forest up in flames. This tongue can burn down the Amazon forest. The whole Amazon. One little spark out of your tongue. He speaks metaphorically, but I think you get the gist of it. My tongue, by the way, has caused more damage in my life than my hands, my eyes, my feet have. This tongue has. James says, if any of us could get that tongue under control, we'd be perfect. Hmm. How many of you are perfect because you say everything perfectly? Do you understand? So Jesus, he elevates this law so high. So, you know, if your eye stumbles, if your hand stumbles, you know what you got to do then? Cut them off. Pluck your eye out. I don't see people doing that. I don't see the legalists doing that. That's when the legalists, the, the far, far extremists, they come along. The ones that are completely against grace and they're the ones that they, they, they shout out your disobedience. They're always talking about sin and how to get your behavior under control. But, but they don't pluck their eyes out. They don't cut their hands off. And James says, none of us have a perfect tongue. So how come they don't cut their tongue out as well? Take the words of Jesus and put them serious and literal. Then cut your tongues out. Right? So Jesus came across hypocrites all the time and Man, I can't stand hypocrisy, and I don't ever want to be a hypocrite. And I'm sure I've been hip hypocritical many times. But hypocrisy is just ugh to me. It's one of my pet peeves, as you call it. Do as I say, but don't. But I'm not going to do what I say. I expect you to do it, but I'm not going to do it myself. Most hypocrites do things in privacy. They expect something out of you, but in their private life, they're doing the very thing they can't stand if you were doing it to them but they'll do it to you. Have you ever gone through that? It's terrible. It's terrible. And if you hurt them, oh man, they'll let you know about it all the time. If you do something against them, they will let you know about it all the time. But if they turn and do something to you, well, you're supposed to forgive them right away. Hey, I for, forgive me right away, but they're there to just show you in your face all the time how you hurt them. They have some unforgiveness completely. Unforgiveness, reminding you, reminding you all the time of how they hurt you, but maybe, or how you hurt them, but maybe they have hurt you too. But you're supposed to instantly forgive, right? <laughs> that happens, you guys. It happens. Do as I say, don't do as I do, because what I'm doing is in private, so you can't see it. But if you did something to them in private, and you did the very thing that they're telling you not to do, oh my goodness, as they say, there would be hell to pay, right? Well, anyway, so Jesus comes across these kinds of people all the time, right? They, 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 they come on, they elevate the law, it's all about the law, but they themselves, Man, they're going around looking for the speck in somebody's eye when they got a giant log in their own eye. So let's talk about this grace and being saved by grace or being saved by your endurance, right? We all fail. We all fail. James said it, even with our mouths. If you think you're doing goody-goody, that's awesome. But even your tongue will say the wrong things and you'll fail. We all do. Otherwise, you're perfect in all your behavior. So, 
what kind of thing are we talking about then enduring and being saved till the end? And when we talk about what Ephesians, what Paul wrote, inspired by the Holy Spirit, what's he saying? Is he contradicting Jesus? Paul says, you're saved by grace through faith. Jesus says, he that endures to the end will be saved. It's interesting because these people that lived in 70 AD, for instance, a lot of what Jesus says in Matthew 24 happens in 70 AD. I'm not saying it's all fulfilled, but I'm saying maybe in 70 AD, we're getting a glimpse of things, you know, until that great persecution, that great tribulation. In 70 AD, the Jews went under a tribulation that was so great for them, it, they had never come across something like this before. The Romans had come in and slaughtered so many people that the bodies were piled so high up that you had to climb over the bodies to get where you wanted to go. And they had burned down the temple which represented the Jews heaven and earth. Even outside the temple they had a basin which they called the sea for their ceremonial cleansing before entering in the temple. This basin of water, they would cleanse in there, they called it the sea, right? And inside the temple, in the ceiling of the temple, you have what, ha what represents the heavens. In the mid midst of the temple, you've got what, what, what represents the mid heavens. And then at the floor, at the bottom of the temple, you have the earth. So their heavens and earth passed away with a hissing sound because the fires from the Romans just wiped it all out. Even the gold sizzled away. Those that were in Judea escaped the ones that had listened to the prophetic words, they escaped on the rooftops of their houses. They didn't look back, they didn't go down to get their stuff. The ones that had listened, that heard and, and did, they did what they heard, called obedience, hupakoe. They heard from the letter um, written to them, they heard the prophecies, so they escaped. And they ran from rooftop to rooftop because their houses were so close together, they could escape that way, you know that? And they, they fled to the mountains. The ones that believed and did what, believed what they heard and obeyed it or did what they heard, they, not one of them died. All had escaped, but the ones that didn't listen, well, they didn't endure to the end, and so they're, they're, they died. Okay, now, we have the word sozo, which is saved, but it also means delivered from harm, right? Delivered into safety, from harm to safety. Moses, or not Moses, Noah and his family, when they got in their ark, they were saved. They made it through harm and were saved. That didn't mean they went to heaven. They were saved though, because they were delivered from safety. 30 years ago, God rescues, because it also means rescue. It also means to be healed. God rescued me from the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses. I was saved from that religion. He rescued me from the harm that I was being indoctrinated with and the influence that happened to me because depression, severe depression and suicidal tendencies and all that stuff happened to me. Oh boy, I hope I know where I'm going here. I hope this thing tells me where I'm supposed to turn because I think I'm about to pass up where I'm supposed to turn. Maybe I go left here, I don't know. Okay, I'm going left. <laughs> Good. Woo, that's scary. I'm like, okay, am I supposed to go south or north? Aha, she just said north. Man, she talks too, too, she talks too late. I have to be where I'm going in nine minutes, so I gotta cut this quick. Cut this short. So delivered from safety, or delivered to safety from harm. I was delivered to safety from harm. When I received Christ as my savior, when he, when, when, when the light inside of me came on, because you once were darkness, now you're light. That's what the scripture says. So, you know, the darkness in me, the light came on, Christ in me. Now I'm aware of, of Christ in me. And so I am saved, right? If I die, I am to go be with the Lord. If this body expires, my spirit comes out, I'm going to go be with the Lord. 
Do you know the man in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 6? He committed such evil, Paul said, not even the pagans. They don't even talk about such things. But this guy who was a believer, he was committing this stuff. He didn't have a mind change about it, a repentance, a mind change. He kept on doing it. So Paul says, you know what? Kick him out of the... Don't, don't hang out with this guy. Since he wants to live under the influence of Satan, then Satan will have at him. Satan will take this guy's physical life. But the man's spirit would still be saved. Paul said that. Now this guy was not enduring anything. He was feeding his flesh and boasting about it so much where Paul had to say, hey, you know, let him go. He's a terrible influence. But he said the guy's spirit would still be with the Lord. Saved. That's amazing, right? So there's your saved to go to heaven or saved to even if you believe in the rapture to be raptured, snatched up. But then we have being saved each and every day. Each and every day from one thing to another to another to another escape from harm. You don't even know. The angels might be protecting you from getting in car accidents and crashing and dying and everything. You just don't know. Sozo means to be delivered from harm or even healed. Some of us haven't experienced healing to manifest in our bodies, although it's been done in our spirit. So in our spirit, yeah, you are healed, but we're still waiting for it to manifest, right? Your spirit is saved. But sometimes salvation we want to see manifest in each and every day. Not about the stuff about going to heaven, but just from what you're going through right here, right now. Like those that were in Jerusalem that escaped to the mountains. They were saved from being killed by the Romans. But we're not talking about them being saved for eternity. I mean, if they were believers, yes, they were saved for eternity. But they experienced salvation right then and there when they escaped from harm. Do you understand that? And when your body does manifest healing, you have been saved from what was eating you up, what was hurting you that day. You were escaped, you, you were delivered from harm. Do you understand that? That's what it is. It's a deliverance. So this enduring to the end, what, which end? The end of, 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 well, for 70 AD, it was their end of, of the whole temple system. And they escaped that. The end of whatever problem you're going through today, when it ends, you endured through it. And guess what? You're here. You escaped. You were delivered from it. That's saved. Eternal salvation is by grace you're saved through faith. You, know, you get to be with the Lord no matter what. Your spirit's joined to the Lord as one spirit. Never to be separated. God hates a divorce, so he will not divorce you. And what God has joined together, let no one separate. Do you understand that? Isn't that awesome? Do you understand the difference now? I hope I've been clear on that. There is saved, from, you know, you were saved. You are in the middle of being saved. And you will be saved. Do you understand these things? <laughs> I hope so. God bless you. I hope this message has blessed you. I'm about to be where I need to be. So um, I'll see you guys all in the next video.